Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and today we have part one of a new series that I'm starting on my channel. Recently when I sat down to brainstorm some videos that I would like to film and things that I want to talk about on my channel, I realized that a lot of these ideas centered around the theme of book series. So I decided to start what I'm going to call the series series. And yes, I am uh, <laughs> very proud of that title. <laughs> So this is essentially going to be a whole bunch of videos, I'm not sure how many yet, talking about different things to do with book series. To start, I thought it would be appropriate to talk about my finished series. Now there are lots of series that I have had the chance to finish, but I didn't want to talk about all of them because we all know I love to ramble. So instead I'm going to talk about my top five series with a bonus one thrown in there. So technically six. I just. I have a hard time narrowing it down. But anyway, without further ado, let's jump into my top five, six <laughs> series that I have completed. Okay, so the bonus one that I want to talk about is a quartet. It's The Giver Quartet by Lois Lowry. And the reason I'm sort of including this as a bonus is because I adore The Giver. Oh, it's one of my favorite books of all time. But I didn't, I wasn't obsessed with the rest of the books in the series. The four books in this quartet are The Giver, Gathering Blue, Messenger, and Sun. Now, The Giver I love. Gathering Blue I love. And then the other two I just kind of liked. They just weren't as good. The Giver is definitely a standout for me. It's definitely my most reread book. I just love the story. I think it's really, um, I don't know, it's just very intriguing. But I've only read the rest of them once. Uh, I would sure, for sure like to reread them at some point. But definitely check out The Giver and the rest of the series because I think they are super underrated or maybe just People have forgotten about them. Either way, you should read them. All right, number five on my list of top five series is the Red Rising trilogy by Pierce Brown. This is a three book series. Obviously, that's what a trilogy means. <laughs> this is a sci-fi fantasy series that starts off on Mars following our main character, Darrow. Now in this society, people are essentially color-coded um, by the color of their hair and these sigils that they have on the back of their hand. Darrow is a red, which is the absolute lowest of the low. He lives actually beneath the surface of Mars in a mining colony, trying to mine this like gas or some sort of element that um, provides power to eventually make Mars inhabitable for people on Earth to come over and have a new place to live. I'm not going to go into much of a synopsis for this because it gets spoilery really fast, but um, just know going into it that Darrow is kind of an idiot, um, but also like very lucky and survives way more than he should <laughs> in reality. But I think there are some really fantastic characters within this. There are some really great friendships and a lot of really good support um, I don't know, depicted in this. If you like something like Hunger Games or Divergent, it has elements of both of those uh, for sure. I think it's pretty clear there's inspiration from the Hunger Games in this. I started reading Red Rising um, during a road trip back home to Maine um, last summer and had to put it down just a couple chapters in because I was like, holy shit, there's a lot that goes on in this book. They're really quick to read through and very dramatic, very action-packed, highly recommend. Okay, the next one is really heavy, but this is the Cormoran Strike series by Robert Galbraith, AKA JK Rowling. Obviously JK Rowling is the author of Harry Potter and I think a lot of people didn't think she would, would be able to break that mold and get outside of that comfort zone that she has set for herself. But these books are absolutely incredible. If you like mysteries, these are really good. They follow our main character, Cormoran Strike, who is a private investigator. He's pretty down on his luck at the start of Cuckoo's Calling, the first book in the series and suddenly he is swept up into a very high profile murder case and his new temp assistant becomes indispensable for him and she's for sure my favorite character. She's awesome, Robin Ellicott. She's so badass and Strike wouldn't last a day without her. Of all of them, Career of Evil, the most recent, is actually my favorite. This one um, is much darker. I mean, they're all pretty dark. This one is much darker than the other two, and it is pretty insane what J.K. Rowling is able to come up with. She's creepy, man. I I was creeped out reading this, pretty disgusted, but also <laughs> really impressed. So if you haven't read these, but you do like mystery, um, crime, that sort of thing, definitely check them out. Just be aware that they can be a little violent, a little gruesome. 
but I liked it. <laughs> oh, I should also mention there's a fourth book coming out, I believe this year, called Lethal White. So another Cormoran Strike novel, and I am so excited to read that one. So number three on my top five series is the Six of Crows duology by Lee Bardugo. So I guess technically this isn't a series, it's a duology, but I guess that kind of counts. And I mean, I'm going to take any freaking chance I can get to talk about these two books because I love them. I read both of them very recently. I didn't pick up Six of Crows until this January, I think, and then read Crooked Kingdom shortly after that. I didn't absolutely love the Grisha trilogy. I thought it was okay, but... I don't know, I would like to go back and reread them after finishing Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom because I really enjoyed these two and I feel like I might have more appreciation for the other three um, after this. But anyway, this the first book in this series is all about a heist that a group of six uh, people are trying to pull off and they are a very mismatched group of people and it's wonderfully diverse and really action-packed but also really reflective and there's so much emotion in both of these books and I love the characters. Nina and Jesper are probably my two favorites. There are some romances in these books that I am, oh my god, all about, 100%, all, all, all in. If you haven't picked these up yet, what are you waiting for? Don't be like me. Don't sleep on this. These are really, really, <laughs> really good. I do kind of recommend reading the Grisha trilogy before these two just because it gives way more context. You'll have no idea what's going on at first, I think. So, I don't know. Number two in my top five favorite series is the Shades of Magic trilogy by V.E. Schwab. Book one is A Darker Shade of Magic, and then we have book two, which is a Gathering of Shadows, and three is A Conjuring of Light. I think these covers are stunning also, which is, I know, not the most important, but... This story takes place in a world where there are four parallel Londons. We have Grey London, which is essentially the London that exists in our world today. We have Red London that is full of magic and uh, vibrant and thriving uh, within the context of all of that magic. It's being used well. White London, however, also has magic, but it has sort of destroyed the world. It's very decrepit and, um, yeah, just everything's dying, essentially. And then number four is Black London, which has already been destroyed by magic, and no one can travel there. No one exists in that world anymore. We spend most of our time in Red London following our main character, Kel, who is the adopted son of the king and queen of Red London. He possesses a unique form of magic. He is called Antari, which means he can travel between Londons. He practices blood magic. There are all kinds of forms that magic takes uh, in this series, different elements that people can control. The magic system is super interesting. I think this is a wonderful series. I am sad that it's over. However, the Schwab ended it in a way where you could certainly continue on with some of these characters. I don't think this is the last time we're seeing this world and I am excited to see where she takes it. So can you guess what my top favorite series of all time is? <laughs> Any guesses? Harry Potter, of course. I love Harry Potter. I grew up reading the books and watching the movies and it spanned my entire childhood. I wrote a blog post about my love for Harry Potter. Um, if you would like to read it, I got very emotional writing it. It was sort of a testament of my love for the series and why it shaped me and how much it has had an effect on my life since. If you haven't read it, I would definitely get on that because I do think you're missing out. I don't know if it will have the same meaning reading it now, but I think, you know, if not just to understand all the references to Harry Potter and just get swept up in this magical community and this world and, you know, then be sorted into your Hogwarts house. I love this series. I think you all understand. No one's gonna be shocked that this is my number one. Uh, Harry. All right, that is everything for part one of my series series. I hope you enjoyed watching this and hearing about some of my favorite series that I have read. And I hope you're excited about this new set of videos that I've got planned. I will post one per week is sort of my goal at this point, but we'll see how that morphs over time. If you have any suggestions about videos that you think would be a good addition to this series, let me know. So thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you want to keep the conversation going, if you've read any of these and they are also in your top five series of all time, let's uh, chat either down below in the comments or you can find all of my social media links in the description box as well. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that you know when my next video comes up. But until then, happy reading. Bye. Oh,